Hello, I'm Robin and welcome to Bookspin. So I thought it was about time that I made this video. I was going to do a top 10 list of my favourite science fiction books that I've read so far, but that felt a bit too restrictive. So I've gone for a top 15 list instead. And in order to keep this list diverse, the only rule that I've set for myself is a maximum of one book per author. Some of these titles are very famous, some of them are less well known, but they are all books that I've read and loved. So let's begin. First up at number 15, we have The Black Cloud by Fred Hoyle. This is a great example of a classic hard science fiction apocalyptic story from the 1950s. And according to Richard Dawkins, it's one of the greatest science fiction novels ever written. In this story, an enormous and mysterious cosmic cloud of gas is discovered by astronomers to be rushing towards the solar system. And this cloud is revealed to be an apocalyptic threat, as it's likely to engulf the Earth and blot out the sun. So an eccentric team of scientists desperately set to work to try and understand this problem and see if there is any way for humanity to avert or survive this crisis. There's a really intriguing plot twist, which is revealed later on to do with the, the nature of the cloud, but I won't spoil that, but I will say it's a really fascinating idea which changes the whole direction of the story. This is a really compelling apocalyptic thriller with well thought out scientific concepts and an interesting cast of characters and some really cool thought provoking ideas which raise deep philosophical questions about the limitations of intelligence and humanity's place in the universe. This is highly recommended classic sci-fi. Severance by Ling Ma. This is an audacious debut novel with a zombie apocalypse tale unlike any other. A mysterious fungal disease called Shen Fever emerges from China and spreads throughout the world. Those infected lose all consciousness and basically enter a zombie state. However, unlike conventional zombie stories, they are not at all aggressive. Instead, they just lose their minds and end up repeating old routines again and again impulsively and indefinitely until they die. In this story, we follow office worker Candice Chen throughout two narrative timelines. One in New York City as the pandemic begins to spread and civilization slowly starts to fall apart. And the second storyline sometime later when she groups with a small band of survivors who somehow seem to be immune to the disease. This book has a really cool premise and it works well as an apocalyptic sci-fi horror novel but it's also an intelligently written satire on capitalism, on office politics and mindless consumerism. And it's full of exceptionally dry humour. I loved it. A Fire Upon the Deep by Werner Vinge. This is an epic hard science fiction space opera adventure full to the brim with mind-bending ideas. It's kind of hard to summarise the plot as there's so much going on in this novel and lots of complex ideas, but I'll just say that it's set during an intergalactic war in the distant future in which two human children are taken captive by a bizarre alien race on a harsh medieval world. And a rescue mission is sent out to find them and save them. And 
ultimately unlock a secret that may be able to save the rest of interstellar civilization. In this story, we get plenty of adventure, twists, and suspense. But the main reason I rank this book so highly is the strength of its highly imaginative ideas and world building. One aspect of the book that really stood out for me is an alien race called the Tynes, who are a dog-like species with a highly sophisticated collective pack intelligence. And they are a really fascinating study into the possibilities of other types of life in the universe. And they live in this bizarre medieval setting with castles and queens and warring factions and political intrigue. And it's a really creative idea uh, and a really interesting alien species. So this is a really unique mind-bending novel. Well worth checking out. The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. I love time loop thrillers, whether it's in books, films or TV. And in my opinion, this is the best time loop story out there that I've come across. Harry August is an Ouroboran, someone who keeps reliving his life again and again. In every cycle of the time loop, he is born in England in 1919, lives out his life, dies, and then is reborn again in 1919 to the same circumstances with all his memories from his previous lives intact. No matter what life choices he makes in each cycle, historical events basically follow the same pattern. As the story develops, an antagonist emerges who is also an Ouroboran, and the narrative evolves from a philosophical time travel story into an exciting spy thriller. This is a compelling story beautifully written and with some great ideas. nineteen eighty four by George Orwell. This has to be the ultimate dystopian novel, a work of genius in social science fiction and a truly terrifying vision of a world in which the state has acquired total and absolute control over the individual via mass surveillance, and repressive regimentation of society. Orwell manages to create a totally chilling and convincing totalitarian world in which we follow a low-ranking civil servant who secretly hates the government and dreams of rebellion, but must keep his dangerously subversive beliefs a closely guarded secret. However, he faces a turning point after falling in love with another worker and learning about a shadowy resistance group. If you've never read 1984, you really should. It's one of the great classics of the 20th century and absolutely worth your time. The Cabinet by Unsu Kim. This is a wonderfully surreal mosaic novel which blends an intriguing sci-fi premise with elements of magical realism, thriller, and dark, dry humour. In the frame story, the protagonist we follow is a humdrum office worker in Seoul who stumbles upon a mysterious filing cabinet full of confidential case files on people called symptomers. And these are people who have bizarre conditions and abilities thought to mark the emergence of a new species of humanity. The thriller element of the story comes into play when we learn of a shady organisation called the Syndicate who will stop at nothing to get their hands on the cabinet. The frame narrative is 
interspersed with little short stories where we learn about the symptoms themselves, and these range from the tragic to the hilarious. So for example, we have the case of a woman who is growing a lizard instead of a tongue. There are case files on people with bizarre diets who can survive just by eating glass or steel or newspapers. And there are also symptomers who have the ability to hack their own memories and deny their past by erasing their memories to create new ones. Lots and lots of crazy stuff, some really bizarre ideas, but somehow the author ties all these threads together and turns them into a unique, funny and fantastical story. The First Men in the Moon by H.G. Wells. H.G. Wells is sometimes said to be the grandfather of science fiction, and I had to include him in this list at some point. Of all his books that I've read so far, this is my personal favourite. This is a quaint and captivating adventure story written at the turn of the 20th century, which brings to life the joys of space travel and introduces some really fascinating first contact ideas. The protagonist in this story is a penniless businessman who comes into contact with a mad scientist working on developing a revolutionary substance called Cavorite, which is basically an anti-gravity metal which negates an object's gravitational pull to the Earth. The scientific premise is preposterous, but together they use this technology to build a spherical spaceship coated in this material as a means to travel to the moon. When they arrive on the moon, they face all kinds of trials and adventures, but the most interesting part of the story, I think, is when they encounter an alien race on the moon called the Selenites. These are an insectoid, intelligent species that live underground and turn out to have a very advanced civilization. I love the world building of the Selenites. It's very imaginative and quite advanced for the science fiction of its time, I think. The writing style is quite often humorous, sometimes philosophical, uh, sometimes thrilling, and occasionally tragic. I think that this is an underrated classic and well worth checking out. The Lathe of Heaven by Ursula K. Le Guin, another author whom I'm obliged to include in this list. She was a really wonderful and imaginative writer of speculative fiction. And while it's very tempting to choose The Left Hand of Darkness as her magnum opus for this list, um, I'm going for The Lathe of Heaven. This was the first of her books that I've read, and I think it has one of the most fascinating premises that I've ever come across in science fiction. It's set in modern day Portland, or near future Portland from the point of view of when the book was actually written. And the central character is an otherwise unremarkable man whose dreams literally come true and have the power to change reality. That is to say that whenever he wakes up after a dream, he finds that the universe has changed in some profound way to reflect his dream. And whatever change has taken place, it's as though the world has always been this way. In other words, history gets rewritten and a whole alternate reality is brought into being. But despite having all of this vast power, he doesn't actually have any means of controlling it. And in fact, he sees it as a curse. So he turns to a psychiatrist, Dr. Harbour, for help. But instead of trying to cure him of his predicament, Dr. Harbour ends up using him by trying to use this man's power to influence his dreams via 
hypnotism uh, to enact his own vision of a better world cured of society's ills. But the thing is, these dreams tend to bring about unintended consequences. So just to give one example, in one episode, Dr. Harbour directs his patient to dream a world without racism. And what happens is he wakes up to a new world where all racial distinctions have vanished and all humans are uniformly grey-skinned and have never known anything different. And there are many more examples like this with huge or devastating consequences, which I won't go into, but all I can say is this is a fantastic novel full of thought-provoking ideas and it's quite a good showcase of Le Guin's beautiful and philosophical writing. One Q84 by Hiroki Murakami. Murakami is a wonderful writer. I've always found his novels a delight to read. I would say that One Q84 is my favourite of his, and it's probably the most sci-fi-ish in terms of its premise that it warrants including in this list. This is an epic novel, originally published in Japan in three volumes, and in my opinion, it's a masterpiece of magical realism. The story follows a young woman in Tokyo in 1984, who early on in the story realizes she has entered a strange parallel universe where the world around her has changed in a number of puzzling ways. For example, there are now two moons in the sky. The Q in the title 1Q84 stands for question mark, and this is what she calls the new parallel existence. Her story alternates with that of a young maths teacher who was her childhood love, who also finds himself transported to this universe. These two narratives are kind of separate from each other, but they gradually converge throughout the course of the novel. I love everything about this book, the high concept premise, the surreal world building, the in-depth character studies, and the complex and unpredictable plot. It's a really long book, but it's perfectly paced and consistently engaging. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This is often considered to be the world's first true science fiction novel. This was also the first science fiction book that I read at the age of about 13 or 14, and it left a deep impression on me. This book shouldn't really need any introduction, of course. It's a masterpiece of 19th century literature, and it's a perfect blend of science fiction and gothic horror, and has had a huge influence on literature and popular culture throughout the two centuries since it was first published. So if you've never had a chance to read this book, I highly recommend checking it out. Don't be put off by how old the text is. It's still as captivating today as it ever was. There's probably about a million videos out there on YouTube already discussing this novel. So I won't add anything more. Just read it. The Rediscovery of Man by Cordwainer Smith. This is a collection of science fiction short stories set in Cordwainer Smith's future history in an interstellar empire known as the Instrumentality of Mankind. Now, it's a bit confusing as there were two publications that came out under this title, The Rediscovery of Man. There's one that came out in 1993 that collected all of his short fiction. And then there's this version, which originally was released in 1975 under the title The Best of Cordwainer Smith and only collects about half of his short stories. 
This book was then later retitled in the SF Masterworks edition, which I have here as The Rediscovery of Man. Anyway, the stories here are truly unique and a delight to read and full of bizarre and surreal imagery. A lot of the stories were influenced by traditional Chinese stories like Journey to the West, and they contain animal characters, or to be more specific, animal-like beings called the underpeople, who are genetically engineered animals modified into human form who act as a slave class for wealthy humans. For example, you have cat people, turtle people, and dog people. These underpeople have humanoid forms and human-like intelligence, but retain some of the physical and psychological characteristics of their animal heritage. These stories often have a dreamlike feel to them and could be interpreted as parables or fables. Cordwainer Smith is probably my favourite short story writer. His stories just never disappoint. You know how a lot of short story collections tend to be a bit hit and miss? You get a few good, decent stories, but others are just forgettable? Well, Cordwainer Smith's stories, by contrast, are constantly excellent, always unpredictable, and always a pleasure to read. Aurora Rising by Alastair Reynolds. Alastair Reynolds is one of the most talented writers of science fiction out there today, and this is my personal favourite of all his books that I've read so far. This book was originally published under the title The Prefect as a spin-off to his Revelation Space series. It was later retitled as Aurora Rising. It's basically a blend of space opera and police mystery thriller set in the 25th century. The protagonist is Prefect Dreyfus, who is basically a police officer working for Panoply, an organization responsible for the security of the Glitterband, which is this vast network of habitats out in space surrounding the planet Yellowstone. What starts off as a murder investigation turns out to be part of a much bigger conspiracy that poses an existential threat for their whole society. The plot is very exciting. There are lots of twists and turns as the stakes keep getting higher. And the mystery element of the story adds a layer of intrigue to the novel. The world building is also second to none. All in all, this is a very satisfying novel that is very addictive to read. A sequel was released a few years ago called Elysium Fire, which doesn't quite match the quality of the first book, I think, but it's still worth checking out. And there's also a third book called Machine Vendetta, which is due to be published later this year, which will round off the trilogy. So I'm very excited about that. The Dark Forest by Sushin Liu. This is the second book in the Three Body Problem trilogy, aka the Remembrance of Earth's Past trilogy. And you could say that this book is representing the series as a whole for this list. However, The Dark Forest is my favourite in the series. It's an absolutely sublime piece of storytelling with a truly epic scope and full of mind-blending hard SF ideas. This series is a real milestone in Chinese science fiction and has been very successful both within China and around the world at putting Kehuan on the map. In 2015, the first book, The Three-Body Problem, won the Hugo Award for Best Novel and this was the first translated novel to achieve this. To summarise the premise for the series as a whole, it's basically a first contact story which takes place over a number of epochs, starting with China's Cultural Revolution 
and extending far into the future, in which humanity comes into contact with an alien species from the planet Trisolaris, and the ensuing conflict which is due to take place. I won't say anything more than that, but I will say that if you love sci-fi with big, mind-blowing ideas grounded in detailed scientific description, you'll probably enjoy this series. The concepts that the writer comes up with are truly breathtaking and invoke a sense of wonder in the reader, much like classic sci-fi writers such as Arthur C. Clarke, but with more complex storytelling, I think. I thoroughly enjoyed this series, and I can't wait to start rereading the series again later this year. To Your Scattered Bodies Go by Philip Jose Farmer. This is the first book in the Riverworld series, published throughout the 1970s and 80s, and I really love the audacity of its premise. It's set in a mysterious, artificially constructed afterlife in which every human who has ever lived is resurrected after death on the banks of a seemingly eternal river on another planet. Across these riverbanks, billions of people from all walks of life, from all cultures and, and from all periods of human history are awakened naked and hairless in their youthful bodies, retaining none of the status or possessions from their previous life. They are miraculously provided food from giant mushroom-shaped structures called grail stones along the river's edge. In this story, we follow the resurrected Sir Richard Francis Burton, the real-life famous Victorian explorer and writer, as he tries to navigate his new existence in this strange afterlife. This novel and the subsequent Riverworld books are basically fantastical adventure novels with very outlandish sci-fi ideas. It turns out that this whole afterlife was engineered by an enigmatic advanced race of aliens for some grand mysterious project and it becomes the goal of people like Sir Richard to set sail on the river and try, try to find its source and seek out these benefactors and determine the real meaning behind their resurrection. It is an absurd premise, but it's great fun to read. It's humorous at times, occasionally thought-provoking, and there are plenty of wacky sci-fi ideas throughout the series. Occasionally the series delves into satire as a means of exploring debates over social issues such as racism, imperialism and sexism. The thing that really grabbed my attention the most though when reading the series was uncovering the underlying mystery of who the creators of this world really are and how and why they built this place. This is a really great read. We're finally down to number one, Hyperion by Dan Simmons. This is such an astonishing book. It was the first sci-fi epic that I read and it really showcased the amazing potential of this genre. I first read this in 2009 and I honestly don't think I've read anything since that has surpassed it, at least not within science fiction. So this story is an epic space opera set in the 29th century against the backdrop of an intergalactic civilization known as the human hegemony. We follow a group of pilgrims as they travel together to the planet Hyperion, home of the legendary time tombs, and this bizarre godlike being known as the Shrike, which is actually a pretty terrifying creature who seems to have powers that go beyond space and time. Each pilgrim has their own story to tell and their own motives for joining this pilgrimage and facing the Shrike. 
So throughout the book, they each tell their tale in turn to the others, and the novel follows a structure similar to the Canterbury Tales. All of these stories are superbly and beautifully written and rich with inventive ideas and complex characterization. They also blend numerous different styles of science fiction. So you get elements of space opera, military sci-fi, cyberpunk, and sci-fi horror. And all these come together very nicely to craft a supremely accomplished and memorable story. You just can't help but be swept away. In order to complete the story, you need to go on and read the sequel, The Fall of Hyperion, which is also an outstanding work, but it's the first book that is, in my opinion, the more memorable of the two because of its distinctive structure. And I can't wait to reread this novel at some point in the near future. I can't recommend this one highly enough. That's it. Those are my top 15 wonderful science fiction books. Thank you for watching. You may have noticed that I've missed off some of the really famous classics in this list. Things like Dune, Ender's Game, Neuromancer, and some might consider this a sacrilege, but while I appreciate their significance within the history of the genre, they're just not personal favourites for me. And there are also some really famous classics within the genre that I haven't read yet, such as the Foundation Trilogy or the Martian Chronicles, which may well earn a place on this list once I've finally read them. So as I read more books and my tastes evolve over time, maybe I will need to do a version two of this video sometime in the future. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on these books in the comments below. Which of these have you read? What did you think of them? Are there any that you're planning to read? And so on. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more science fiction content.